in people above age 70 years, up to 100 years old, many people are not having treatment for high LDL cholesterol because there's a perception that in individuals of this age, uh, LDL cholesterol is maybe not so important and statins might not help them. So we set out to test that in what's called the Copenhagen general population uh, study, uh, where we have 90,000 individuals where a large fraction are among those 70 to 90 years old. And here we could show that uh, in the people above age 70 up to 100 years of old, years of old the relative importance of high LDL cholesterol was as important as in those age 20 to 70 years old. However, very importantly, the absolute risk of myocardial infarction and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease were much higher in those age 70 to 100 than those age 20 to 69 uh, years old. And then we also estimated um, what would be the number needed to treat to prevent one myocardial infarction and one atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease event. In those age 80 to 100 years old, we would only need to treat 40 individuals for five years with a a moderate intensity study to prevent uh, one ASCVD event and aided to prevent one uh, myocardial infarction event. If you get to the other scale, the 20 to 49 years, it's close to 1,000 you needed to treat for five years to prevent one. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't treat young people. It just means that for the elderly, much more uh, to be gained by treating them if they have high LDL with statins. The other study that came out of Howard Medical School took all the statin trials together with trials on acetamide and PCSK9 inhibitors and focused on the individuals above age 75. And there they could show that uh, the effect of LDL lowering with these three types of drugs were at least as good as it was for those less than 75 years uh, per one millimole LDL cholesterol uh, reduction. So the two studies together show very clearly that if you are above age 70, 70 to 100, you have the highest risk of myocardial infarction, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease events, and you get at least as much benefit on a relative scale, but on an absolute scale, you get the greatest benefits for these elderly people. And why is this particularly relevant now? It's certainly because we now live in an era in uh, Western societies, rich countries, where people live much longer than they did before, and usually they have had a healthier life, they have been treated uh, with preventive medication, and certainly if they have comorbidities, these have also been treated. So we have lots of people above age 70 that live a fully normal life and that could live without having cardiovascular disease until uh, they die for some other cause. So hopefully guidelines in the future will take these type of data into account.